appeal to authority. This is on page 93 of the Tavani. And appeal to authority is, uh, is another one that's a, a, it's a good tool in your toolbox, but by itself it's a fallacy because it can't stand on its own. And this is particularly true when you're using an authority that's when you're using someone that's not a, a, an authority on what you're talking about. Like if you say Magic Johnson uh, holds that quantum physics and string theory is superior to Einstein's theory of general re relativity for explaining gravity, you know, that's not very helpful because Magic Johnson is a basketball player <laughs> and isn't a physicist. Uh, but So let's look at an example where we're talking about an expert who's an expert on what, on the subject matter. Futurist Ray Kurzweil says that by the year 2019, most computers will not need cables to connect them to one another or their peripherals. Therefore, everything in the office will be wireless by 2019. Now, I'm taking this, this out of context. This is something that Kurzweil did say, um, and he may have supported this really well, but let's, let's look at it outside of context for the moment. Um, and I think a, a way to demonstrate why this is a bad argument is to look to the future. Let's say we're in the year 2018, December 15th. We've got about half a month until 2019 goes around. It doesn't look like we're going to have a wireless office anytime soon, at least within the next year. And someone says, yeah, but Ray Kurzweil, who's a renowned futurist, said that by the year 2019 we're going to have a wireless office. Uh, that's, I mean, who cares if he said it or not? It doesn't, in a month and a half, we're not going to suddenly have a revolution of, of wireless offices. Uh, how, are, how are people going to buy stuff that quickly, uh, even if the technology is created? So, False cause. False cause says that because A occurs before B, that A causes B. Now, A occurring before B is the beginning of some evidence for A causing B. Because if A occurs after B, I mean, that's proof that A doesn't cause B because something can't cause something else if it occurs after that something else. But just because something occurs before something else, uh, th that's not strong evidence that it occurs, that, that it causes that something else. And here's another social issue that's, that's unrelated to information technology ethics, uh, but that's a, a false cause, an ethical false cause argument um, concerning... Um, state-sponsored prayer in school uh, and again I'm not taking a stance on on this issue or arguing for or against the conclusion but I'm saying that this argument as it stands as a false cause argument is, is a poor argument. Uh, crime, teenage pregnancy, divorce, uh, number of social ills have increased since the prohibition of state-sponsored prayer in school and state-sponsored prayer in school uh, by that I mean making children stand up in public school and, and say a prayer. Uh, therefore, this judicial decision is clearly responsible for these social problems. Again, it might be the case that that the, this prohibition did cause these problems, but any number of things could have caused these problems also. Uh, just because that decision occurred before these problems increased, doesn't mean that it did cause these problems because an increase of poverty could have caused these problems. Uh, increase in population could have caused uh, an increase in these problems. Now, there could just be natural spikes in the occurrence of these problems and that this decision occurred right before one of these spikes took place coincidentally. Appeal to the people. When we're talking about public opinion, uh, appeal to people argument is probably a pretty good argument, uh, saying that you know, most people agree that such and such. And, you know, but when we're talking about kind of facts that are going on, or moral issues, uh, just appealing to the people isn't a very good argument. Let's let's look at an example of appeal to people from the television show Kids in the Hall. Thirty Helens. Agree. You can't pay too much for a good pair of shoes. 
sensible shoes make sense. I spend a lot of time on my feet, and these make it a lot easier. My God, your feet are what you walk on. Thirty Helens agree. You can't pay too much for a good pair of shoes. So what this clip is saying is that because 30 women named Helen agree that you can't pay enough for a good pair of shoes, that you can't pay enough for a good pair of shoes. Um, an example from information ethics that's very common is the following. Lots of people think that it's okay to illegally download music. Therefore, it is okay. The problem is that lots of people have believed a lot of things that... Uh, Lots of people believe a lot of things are okay that aren't morally okay. In this country, lots of people believe that slavery and uh, Jim Crow laws and segregation were all perfectly morally correct things, and there are very good arguments against those things, and I think this is an appeal to the people, but I think most of us would agree, based on good evidence and good argumentation, that those things are not morally permissible. And so just saying that lots of people think that they are permissible is not a good argument. It does not establish that it's correct. The last fallacy we look at is uniquely an information ethics argument. Uh, it's the virtuality fallacy. This is on Devani, page 97. And it goes like this. X exists in cyberspace. Cyberspace is virtual. Therefore, X is not real. The assumption is that things in cyberspace do not affect the world or are not a part of the world that we live in. And, and it's understandable why someone might think this. I mean, when you use the word virtual, uh, in some sense, the word virtual means not real. But things that cyberspace is enmeshed in our world. It is part of our world, and we engage in cyberspace. And things that happen in cyberspace have a real impact on the world that we live in. Cyberbullying, cybercrime, cyber terrorism, uh, identity theft. You know, these things have a real impact on our world. And so, just because they go on in cyberspace does not make them not real. So this concludes the critical thought and analysis portion of the lecture.